Hey guys, it's Carl. So crazy to think it's uh, somehow already uh, back to school season. It's pretty much September in uh, a couple weeks, which is nuts, absolutely nuts how fast the summer has gone by. So this essentially is uh, what's in my tech bag back to school edition or some of the best tech when you're uh, heading back to uh, the classroom. I myself, it's been a couple years after me personally, but uh, I do have uh, three degrees actually under my belt and I have kind of lived uh, the student, I'll just say dream because I, I really liked uh, when I was a student. The first thing that we'll start off with is the backpack. So this one has made an appearance. It's the Air SF pack. So this is the Air SF duffel to be exact. This is uh, one of their uh, limited edition collabs and I've literally had this backpack for, I wanna say close to a decade. If you followed along on the channel, you know how much I rave about these packs, but because they honestly just stand the test of time, I literally use them day to day. I bring all my stuff to the studio, I bring all my tech, I bring my lunch, I bring my workout gear. They just last and hold up really well. So they're made out of ballistic nylon and this is a front loading zipper style. So it's a lot easier to access um, all of your stuff in the middle of the pack. And typically in the middle, you can actually see, I've got literally my lunch uh, sitting. I've got a little orange as a snack, which I kind of throw into the main pack. This is where I like to stick a lot of um, my gym gear. And on the bottom, they actually have a separate compartment. If you've got uh, smelly sneakers, you can kind of slot your sneakers uh, into the bottom so they don't stink up say your lunch or any of the stuff in the main compartment. On the back, this is typically where I throw my tech. So it's large enough to hold say a 15 inch. I've got the 15 inch MacBook Air or even 16 inch MacBook Pro. You can slot that in nicely and you still have more than enough room for say textbooks, for extra accessories. You've got extra little zippers to hold some of your smaller smartphones. And you of course have a little top zipper to hold some of your essentials. So super, super versatile. It's super comfy. You can see all of the uh, cushioning on the back. And if you're hauling this around the entire day, you can get by uh, with just uh, one pack and have all of your essentials uh, in one place. So highly, like highly recommended. Like if you've watched my videos, like I said, over the past like decade, this has made an appearance. They keep coming back just because um, they kind of hold the test of time and this will last you your entire undergrad, your entire master's, whatever you're doing in school, this is like a multi-year bag, which um, is great. So you don't have to replace it all the time. So going on to actual devices, and I'm a huge believer in just kind of carrying one. I hate uh, splitting or having a uh, multi devices. It's just kind of too much to carry around. So I've split this up into either team laptop or team tablet. For the laptop, my number one recommendation is always being the MacBook Air. I think for a student, 99.9% .9 of you out there, this is the laptop to get. And now with the 15 inch form factor, if you can carry something a bit larger, you've still got the benefits of the MacBook Air being super thin, super lightweight, and you now have the larger 15 inch display. And like I said, it's got the M2 chip. It's an absolute powerhouse. The MacBook Air is my recommended laptop of choice, but, if you are on an iPad, so if you want to rock the tablet, I can still say the standard iPad line, so this is the iPad 10th gen, this is more than enough. And if you really need that extra juice uh, with the say M series as silicon, get the iPad Air. So those are the two options that I kind of recommend. An iPad has gotten a lot better. iPad OS has just come leaps and bounds. You can obviously fully get by on this. I know that there's some pieces of software that still require like a full dedicated operating system, a full dedicated OS. That's why a MacBook Air makes sense. But if all you're doing is uh, jotting down notes, uh, typing out emails, obviously surfing the net, playing the occasional game, you can grab an iPad, just make sure you get it with some accessories to make the iPad a bit more complete. And for those accessories, I've got most of them from ESR. They actually make pretty legit and a lot of uh, different tech accessories. So this is for the iPad. This specific one is for the iPad Air, for the iPad Pro. And having an actual keyboard case really expands the uses out of an iPad. So now you can actually type out a full essay. You can type out emails when you're surfing the net. It's just a lot easier to use actually typing on a keyboard, not on the virtual uh, keyboard on say the screen. It does come with a nice little clicky trackpad. Once again, just making navigation a lot easier and it keeps your iPad nice and secure. So this just kind of snaps in 
and now your iPad is kind of safe from getting all of the weird scratches and you can put this into your pack. It's safe, it's portable, you're not gonna scratch your screen and they also have other accessories that, for example, this uh, digital pencil, pretty much a, a cheaper version of the Apple Pencil. As an example, this is around uh, 25 bucks compared to the $100 that Apple charges uh, for their Apple Pencil. This still is uh, magnetic to charge, so you can snap this onto your iPad. You just need to note uh, it does charge via USB-C, so this little uh, cover, you do need to remove that to charge it, and it does have the little LED indicator lights to let you know how much uh, battery you've got left. So obviously a nice little budget alternative. It still writes, draws, and performs just as good as the Apple Pencil. You're just not paying the Apple tax, and it's a solid little alternative. For smartphones, this is probably pretty subjective. You're either a team iOS or a team Android. So obviously, I've just got my standard iPhone, which I kind of use as my daily. I am rocking the 14 Pro, but I would still say for most students, just grabbing the standard 14, and if you want the larger battery life, the 14 Plus is probably uh, my recommended option. Or you could grab the new Z Flip 5. I think this is such a nostalgic throwback to uh, the snapping and uh, closing flip phones back in the day. Uh, so when I was a student, I actually used to have the Motorola Razr and just doing the classic, you know, when you're done a phone call, just snapping it shut, or if you wanna answer it, just flipping it open to answering a phone call. I thought it was like the coolest uh, little techie ever. Obviously the new features of the Flip 5, you've got the larger cover display. It's 80% larger, so you can actually do useful stuff on the front. And it has a brand new flipping mechanism, so there is actually a no little gap anymore. It just makes the pocketability a lot better. And if you're wondering, I do have uh, these little D-brand skins on the back of both devices just to customize your own phone um, if that's your jam. But if you are a team, iOS, I've got some pretty cool accessories, once again, from ESR. The first three, they're all kind of MagSafe compatible. So the first one here, this is a MagSafe wallet with a built-in power bank, which I think is pretty dope. So obviously with the wallet, you can put things like your student card, your transit card, if you're taking the subway, onto the back, and it does act as a little kickstand as well. This flips out and you can actually turn your phone sideways to be in landscape if you're watching a show on your phone. And it does have 5,000 milliamps of juice. You can actually see the little indicator lights on the bottom to let you know how much uh, juice you have left. Charges via USB-C and it's a dope little addition. So that's case number one. Number two, if you don't like that extra bulk and you don't need that extra battery life, this is just their standard MagSafe wallet. And it does have this little uh, thing on the bottom, which you can actually use uh, as a little finger loop. So you can use your phone a bit uh, easier in one hand. And it also acts as a little makeshift stand as well. Once again, this is only uh, in landscape. So if you want to watch uh, any content on your phone, and lastly, if you don't need the MagSafe wallet accessory and you really find yourself uh, running out of juice, I know that powering up devices is always a challenge. Uh, say when you're a student, you go to class like in the morning, you're at the gym, you go back to another couple classes, you're literally out of the house or out of the dorm for 10, 12 hours just having your devices constantly juiced up. This one has 10,000 milliamp hours of juice. And the thing that I like, all of these accessories actually, it doesn't require any cables. They all kind of work uh, via MagSafe. So this snaps onto the back and it does have that little kickstand still. If you wanna use the phone, once again, in portrait or in landscape orientation, kind of whichever way you want. So definitely a uh, useful little accessory. Once again, uh, all with MagSafe and all keeping cables out of the equation. So moving on to headphones, I'm keeping in Team Apple because I feel once you're in an ecosystem, you kind of fall into that, uh, it's hard to escape. So the first one, AirPod Pros. And the reason for the Pro models, it just has active noise canceling. When you're a student, when um, you're studying, when you're in busy coffee shops, the last thing that you want is that external noise to kind of bother you from whatever you're focusing on. That's the reason why I would splurge for Pro models just for that active noise canceling. Once again, I've got another little ESR case. This just keeps your expensive purchase kind of protected. And it also has a magnetic lid so the AirPods won't pop out, say if you drop them by accident. These are uh, MagSafe enabled and it has this nice little carrying case. So you can clip this to say the side of your bag, your keychain, uh, because you never wanna lose your AirPods. And the second ones, these are the new Beat Studios. And when I was a student, this is actually when I started like my YouTube channel, they had like the Beats mixers as well as the studios. Everyone had them back in the day. 
they're making an appearance or reappearance. The studios have a, I'll say a new redesign, but they still have that iconic Beats look. These are obviously cheaper than AirPods Max and they still have that active noise canceling. You can rock them to the gym. They're stylish. They come in a bunch of different colorways as well. This is kind of like a neutral. They also have the brown versions, which I was eyeing. And um, whichever option that you go for, I think that you can't go wrong. And if you have an iPhone, these all kind of sync and work together because Beats was bought by Apple. And when I was a student, it was still um, Beats by Dre. I miss those initial um, unboxing videos over 10 years ago. Moving on to wearables. Once again, Apple watches kind of take the lead here. I think everyone uh, for a wearable Apple watches are still like the leaders in the segment. So I've got my Apple watch ultra for students, honestly, just a standard Apple watch. You can grab a series eight if you want, or even the Apple watch SE, which I think is the best value. Still, you don't need to get that always on display. If you just want something to track your workouts, to track your sleep, to track your basic metrics, it pretty much has everything that the Ultra has just minus the extra battery life. You don't need the, obviously the large size that's built, um, you know, the Ultra is built out of titanium, all those extra features you're paying for. And um, if you want, just grab a rubber strap. This one's from Nomad. Obviously I'm a huge orange fan. Keeping a rubber strap on, it just increases the longevity. They don't fray, you can get them wet. Um, if you're working out a lot, it just kind of stands once again, the test of time. Definitely uh, grab an Apple Watch. To round off the Apple game, slightly biased uh, in my opinion, but if you are in the ecosystem, like I said, just get a couple air tags. You can throw this um, in your school backpack. You can toss them on your keychain. It's probably the best thing to buy around that uh, $30 mark that you literally can't go wrong. I used to lose things all the time. I still do. I rely on these uh, daily probably the most recommended thing on your list, to be honest. Switching to a couple accessories, which I think are sometimes overlooked, but super valuable. So just having a little mouse, being a student, you're usually um, kind of traveling between uh, classes. Your workstations might be your small little dorm desk. You might be working at a coffee shop. You might be working um, at a classroom. Just stay away from using the little trackpad. If you really want to be productive, just stick a $20 mouse in your bag. So this is the Logitech MX Anywhere mouse. I use mine anywhere and everywhere. I always have mine in my backpack. And if you want to have a little hard drive, depending on the storage option that you choose for your device, I always say get the lowest storage option, get an SSD just to keep all of your stuff backed up, to keep your stuff nice and safe. Once again, it can just be thrown into your pack. And this last little one, I know that we've gone through a lot of tech, maybe having that all floating around in your backpack isn't too ideal. This is just the little tech pouch from Peak Design. I've cut out the middle so you can actually throw all of your tech uh, in one place without it sloshing around in your backpack. You can keep your headphones, your earbuds, your power banks, pretty much all the accessories that you may have kind of in one place. So you don't have to kind of worry about them getting lost and you just kind of keep things organized. This is way easier to manage than them, like I said, floating around. And that is pretty much the most tech that you'll need uh, for back to school. The last one, I had to throw some gaming in. So obviously when I was in school, I brought uh, my Nintendo Switch with me everywhere. And the Nintendo Switch being six years old, I actually got this uh, at the end of my master's and I played more video games than I'd like to admit. So if you're in school, I know that we have a ton of uh, mobile gaming. We've got some pretty cool uh, smartphone um, hybrid systems like the Steam Deck, but nothing beats uh, playing some Switch games. If you're a big Zelda, Mario fan, those Nintendo games just kind of hit a bit different. Uh, so Tears of the Kingdom, it's probably the last game that I played just playing on the Switch, just super nostalgic. So if you end up failing school, don't blame me that um, you played too many video games, but um, I wouldn't object. Maybe your parents would, maybe your bank account would, but um, that is it for the best tech for back to school season. Wishing you all a happy back to school, whether you're just entering um, university, whether you're going back um, as an additional student, whether you're um, refreshing your skills. Best of luck this year, and I'll catch the rest of you in one uh, of my next episodes. Peace.